I'm filming this video on the 27th floor of a high-rise apartment building in Bangkok, which is super weird when you think about it because like a hundred years ago this wouldn't have been possible. First of all, I'm a white dude, right? Like I grew up in the United States, my parents are from the United States, um, I'm of European ancestry, so why would I be in Bangkok? Second of all, how do you even make a 27-story high-rise apartment building, right? Those didn't exist for most of history. Third, there are over 10 million people who live in Bangkok. Whereas in 1900, the largest city in the world was London, where 5 million people lived. In other words, if it weren't for the Industrial Revolution, then I wouldn't be here. Industrial age capitalism kind of gets a bad rap because it's destroying the environment and because there's still a lot of people who don't have very much to eat. But when you think about it, it's kind of a miracle, right? Like, for most of history, we didn't have enough food for even 1 billion people, let alone 8 billion people. And then we can also build these huge cities and we can create technologies that make life more convenient and more fun, like the refrigerator. And we can fly across the world in less than a day, like it's awesome. We kind of take this stuff for granted because we've had it for our entire lives and we've never experienced life without it. And we also don't really see the nuts and bolts and gears that go into what makes this stuff possible. So what makes this stuff possible? Well, that's what energy scientist Vaclav Smil's book, How the World Really Works, is about. This book is basically about how do we make enough of the stuff that we need to support all the stuff that we want to do. And it's not sexy, it's not something that you'll see in a movie, it's not something that you'll read many articles about because it's just not very entertaining, but it's super, super important if we want to not have civilization collapse. So first off, energy. Physicists still don't really know exactly what energy is, but we know that it's really important because you can't get stuff done without energy. Most big technological breakthroughs that change society are really just ways of converting one energy form into another form of energy, right? So for example, fire converts the energy from matter into heat, or a sail converts wind energy into making your boat go. The reason why all the stuff you see around you is possible, the reason why we have modern civilization is because we found a bunch of really cool ways to convert one form of energy into another form of energy. But there's some problems, right? First of all, we need a ton of energy in order to do all the stuff that we do. Second of all, it's really difficult to store energy, so we kind of have to keep generating new energy every single day. The most efficient form of energy, by far, is fossil fuels, which is kind of a problem because fossil fuels are fucking up the environment. But at the same time, if we just stop using fossil fuels today, then the world would collapse. Right now we're working to do more and more with solar and wind and geothermal, but fossil fuels are just better right now because A, they're really cheap, and then B, you can move them around pretty easily, and C, you can store them pretty easily so they can last a long time. When climate change activists, clean energy activists talk about how we need to move beyond fossil fuels, they're absolutely right because fossil fuels have a ton of problems, but they underestimate just how difficult it's going to be to move beyond fossil fuels. If we made fossil fuels illegal today and said nobody can use fossil fuels anymore, then a lot of people would starve to death because we wouldn't be able to make enough food and we wouldn't be able to transport the food that we did make to the people who need it. So speaking of food, this is what Vaclav Smil had to say about food. What was the most important technological innovation of the 20th century? A lot of people would say the atomic bomb or the tank. Some people might say the air conditioner because it allows you to live in hotter places. But Vaclav Smil would say that the most important technological innovation of the 20th century was nitrogen fixation. And the reason why nitrogen fixation is so important is because if you take nitrogen out of the air, you can use it to make fertilizer. And if you make a really good fertilizer, you can grow more crops. And if you grow more crops, you can make more food. And if you make more food, then you can feed more people. Today we can make enough food for 8 billion people. Um, the only people who really starve to death in the world today are people in countries like North Korea or South Sudan that have political issues. Like, there's enough food for them, we just can't get it to them. I um, mean, that's really weird, right? For most of history, people were starving to death left and right. Making food was really, 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 really hard. And the reason why we can make more food today is because we have really awesome fertilizers. Nitrogen fixation is the reason why we don't live in a Malthusian dystopia where everyone's just fighting each other for food all the time. In addition to ammonia, there are three other things that Vaclav Smil calls the four pillars of modern civilization, and those are ammonia, cement, steel, and plastics. And why are these the pillars of modern civilization? Well, because we use them for basically everything. If you look around you right now, you'll probably see a zillion things that are made out of plastic, right? Like I've got this water bottle that's made out of plastic, and my microphone here is made out of plastic, um, and my pen is made out of plastic, like everything is made out of plastic. When we need something sturdier than plastic, we usually turn to steel, right? So for example, my refrigerator over here is made out of steel. Right, or the apartment building that I'm in right now has a lot of steel. Right, You can't make a giant apartment building without steel. 
Plus, most of the machines that they use to make stuff in factories are made out of steel. And then we use cement to build buildings and roads. So if we didn't have any cement, then we would not be able to make as many buildings as we have, and we would not be able to build as many roads as we have. We take this stuff for granted because we see it around us every day, and it always works, and it's not that sexy, and we can kind of just forget about it. But the thing is that if something happens to one of these four pillars, right, if we run out of steel or we, we can't make cement anymore or we stop being able to use plastic, then civilization's probably going to collapse. So anyways, thanks so much for checking out Theo's Book Club. If you're new around here, my name's Theo. I make brief videos like this one on the big ideas on the books that I read so that you can learn the stuff that I learned and so you can decide which books you want to read for yourself. If you like this video, do me a big favor, hit the thumbs up button down there. Um, this is a brand new YouTube channel and I'm trying to get traction, so if you give a thumbs up, that tells YouTube, hey, this is a good video, we should show it to more people, um, which helps. You can also hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of these book review videos pop up in your feed. And until next time, don't take anything for granted, and have a great day.